Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 3, Episode 4 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. An excellent point! I never thought about that. How did the person who's communicating with them survive the 3700 years? And how are we sure it's like one person, like a group of people is probably more likely because that's what Senku has. And the other, is there a significance to 3700 years? And the only reason, like 37 is a prime number and this is Dr. Stone. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of how this number could mean something. You know, it's uh, 37 is the atomic number for rubidium, which is a, a metal. It looks like silver, but it produces red on the emission spectrum, not green. So I don't know if that's related. Kepler 37b is the smallest known planet. The radius is slightly greater than our moon, but it's a little bit smaller than Mercury. But the mass is much heavier than our moon. Not that the... I'm probably just stretching at this point, I don't know, but I have a feeling that somehow 37, 37, it's all going to come together some way or the other, and I just can't figure it out for right now. That is the most basic cathode ray tube I have ever seen and granted this is the stone world but I, I didn't think it could even get simpler than the what like I, I had to build one time in just like a lab for a class but this is really bare bones and I mean the, the whole process of Creating the, the powder out of the saffrolite and then dissolving it in water so it sticks to glass. Sure. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole point of it is just so you can have like a glossy surface on the bottom of uh, that flask. Because if it was just a really clean flask that you would use like in a lab for mixing chemicals, then you wouldn't actually see that little green dot. It would just go right through it. Especially during the day, the light is not going to reflect well at all. A cathode ray tube or a CRT works by heating up a tungsten coil as step one and we know that Senku has it because he showed the whole process behind it at the end of season one or something in season two but we know he's got it. Heating it up causes the electrons to get excited meaning higher levels of energy and they fly off the tungsten coil which is the anode side towards the cathode side so from the negative towards the positive and that's how we control the direction of the electrons movement. The electrons are moving so fast that they fly through a magnetic field and they get deflected onto the display and we see this as one dot on the bottom of the flask. The reason that Senku has to vacuum seal the flask first before he can actually heat everything up is because as tungsten heats up as a very high melting point and all the air molecules around it will vibrate and expand and eventually the glass will explode. Tungsten is the metal filament that's used in your light bulbs because of its really high melting point and the reason that the light bulbs have to be vacuum sealed is for the same reason. If they weren't then as the tungsten heats up the air around it heats up and then once you flick the light switch every light bulb would just explode if it wasn't vacuum sealed. <laughs> Senku is using crystals, which is incredibly, incredibly smart and is really, really clever. I, I will say it, it would be better if he had concentrated magnets to act as a deflecting coil, but Stone world. The crystals will work. It, it needs to be the same material on both sides for even distribution, and it's also not going to come out that perfectly clear. For higher quality, Senku will need magnets out of a coil to create a stronger magnetic strip. And if he wanted to add a vertical element and display a grid on that uh, at the bottom of the flask, then he will need to add the same crystals but perpendicular to the ones he already added or just add a whole separate like opening so one only does horizontal, one only does vertical but there's lots of different ways to go about this. Cathode ray tubes were the norm for almost all TV sets for many many years and if you actually wanted to test it out 
Just take a any, any magnet will do and then just hold it right next to the television and you will see the image start to distort and get out of shape and that's because the cathode ray tubes are going to be interrupted by the magnet you're like touching the screen to. And also almost all those are going to have like curved screens for other television sets but at the, the eventually what happened was those curved screens got out of use and then people found better LED technologies and LCDs and all this fancy stuff until eventually we came up with flat screens. And that's why they're called flat screen TVs is because initially they were all curved because that's what we use for cathode ray sets. The flat lines on their sonar do represent the ocean floor, or it could also mean that it's just out of range, so it's undetectable of whatever they are trying to find, because no electrons are bouncing back, and no returning signal could mean nothing is there, or it also could mean that you hit the floor. If you're in the ocean and humans haven't fished in 3,700 years, I bet the population of fish just flourished. So you cast out a net just about anywhere using that really, really like janky sonar technology, you'll get a bunch of fish. This sonar will be harder to interpret depth at which these fish are underwater. It will be sufficient to give a general number of fish beneath them, but he'll need to count the number of the uh, up and down zigzags, and the further apart they are, then the closer the fish are to the surface. This technology is used by commercial and sport fishermen today. In fact, the displays have gotten so good that now we have microcontrollers and microprocessors. It'll actually tell you, like, it, it'll have a photo of a fish. It'll give you like at which depth it's at and like where it is relative to your boat. And it's really, really cool what they come out with. But this is, this is really something special. I'm super impressed he did this. It would be interesting to know if the motor from that actual boat is interfering with it. Well, probably not. I mean, even if it is, it doesn't actually change the plans or anything. I thought that Semku was going to build some sort of hydrophone, but no, this is way, way cooler. <laughs> Don't count out Crow, man. He just made a metal detector. The iron is inducing a magnetic field in the coil, which is going to cause the display to fly in all sorts of directions. And those uh, zigzag up and down lines will be really big because of how close he is to the iron. It's always been weird to me that you need to have metal to find metal. It's a very, very fun little paradox. Given the strength of his metal detector is really, really bad, Chrome has to be very close to the iron deposits to actually find them. And the closer he gets, the stronger the induced magnetic field will be, and the bigger the lines on his cathode ray tube will be, and that's how he knows he hit the jackpot. <laughs> That is true, man. Humans are really good at recycling. One man's trash is another man's treasure. I forgot that guy's name. He used to be a villain. But if you actually look, he's using that oxygen tank that Senku and Chrome were wearing when they actually had to go through like that sulfur pit in a previous episode. So that is really cool that he's still using the earlier technology. He's not just building on new ones. It's still utilizing the whole, like, man, this is like, I, 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 really, I really appreciate this episode. This is super, super cool. This road is going to be really useful to them because as cool as that car is, it's got no shock absorbers, which means you will feel every little bump in the road. And granted, like, Pressure will solidify this asphalt. Now, one thing to know is that you don't just bash it with a hammer over and over again. It is going to be important that you apply equal pressure everywhere. Otherwise, you haven't really solved the problem because if you've got three different people who are hitting it at different forces, you're going to get a bunch of like uneven asphalt like structures, right? So, you need to make sure everyone is beating it with a hammer at the same strength. <laughs> Let's go, 
けは完璧そうねチーマーで<笑>鉱山といや決まってんだろ乗り物はトロッカーWait a minute. So, this is what Kenshiki was building? Bro. This is wild. This is super cool. Senku set up a whole distribution network between the mines, the oil fields, their laboratory, and the Ishigami village. Yo. There was a lot in this one episode, and he's right. Oil will accelerate growth like no other. This is so cool, man. Dr. Stone really keeps things interesting and engaging. I love it. And I. I, I really hope that that like you guys appreciate this video as much as I appreciate this episode. This was super, super dope, man. But thank you all so much for watching, and I wish everybody the best rest of their day.